Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about commissary in jail. I've had a lot of questions asked about that, so I'm just going to kind of go through all of it. How you order it, how you get money for it, the prices, they do vary, but the prices, what you can get, it's just stuff like that. How you order commissary, it's usually a kiosk inside the jail pod. It'll look like this. Years ago, they had pieces of paper that you would fill out. We even, I remember even having like the bubble sheets where you fill out what you wanted to get, how many you wanted to get and stuff like that. But now from what I've seen, most jails have the kiosk and it'll show you your name. It'll show how much money you have and then it'll show the prices of everything. And as you're buying stuff, it'll show you what you have left. The only way you can get money onto your account, we call it your books, is if someone from the outside is putting money into your account. I know I've talked about this before, but I think a lot of people are still not understanding exactly how it works, but they charge your family, friends, whoever's putting money into the account, the jail is gonna charge them a fee to put the money into the account. If you have nobody doing that for you, then you have no money. Unless you went to jail with some cash on you, now some jails will put it onto your account some jails won't. Some jails will keep it and then give it back to you when you get released and they'll put it on a debit card or a check or money order or something like that. But some jails will put it onto your account. Some jails, they have a machine that you walk through and put your money into the account before they take all your stuff from you. If you have no one doing that for you, then you have no money. You have no way to buy commissary. The only way you can get commissary is if you're trading like the food trays that you have that you get from the jail, or if you like wash somebody's, like hand wash their uniform for them, their shoes, you have to work for it. There's side hustles you could do, braiding hair or coloring or whatever to try to get commissary. And it, it's crazy because if you don't have money for commissary, you're gonna be without. You won't be able to take a proper shower. Most jails don't give you deodorant or anything close to it. You'll get a small, tiny bar of soap. The soap will look like this. It's small. You might get some of this toothpaste and then you'll get like a tiny toothbrush, but then that's it. So I know people always ask, why does it stink in jail? But that's why. <laughs> they don't give you hygiene products, men, women. And then on top of that, if you have any kind of issues going on, especially being women, they don't give you proper care in there being a woman. You only get one or two pair of underwear. You don't get enough pads to last you. So of course you're gonna start having issues down there if you didn't already have them coming in. You're sharing toilet seats with people that you don't know. I mean, it's just, you have to use like the bare mouth toilet paper because it's not unlimited. It's just different things. And if you have something going on down there, let's say you get BV and you go to the nurse to get meds. They give you the meds and it causes a yeast infection. Then you gotta wait again to try to get the correct meds and hope that they give you the right amount to get rid of it. But you're going to be waiting and waiting with all that going on. And it's just, it's horrible. It's like torture. So you've got to deal with all that on top of the hygiene that you don't get in there. And that's why it stinks in jail. You don't get deodorant. You can go get under the shower and run some water over your body. But I mean, how much is that going to clean? If you get no money on your books for 30 days, or maybe it's like $5 or less, then you can file indigent which means you have to fill out a form and wait, but then they'll give you this stuff again for free. But that's all you're getting. So without having somebody on the outside putting money into your account, there's nothing else you can do. I'm gonna add a couple of sheets of commissary lists, what they look like on paper and with the prices. Prices vary, but the prices are usually doubled or tripled. I have seen a lot of articles where they're talking about how Inmates are being sold a lot of expired things, food, medications, whatever. So what's the point of wasting your money on that? If it's expired, it's probably not going to work or it's going to make you sick. You can buy shoes, underwear, socks, bra on commissary if you have money. You can get one of these white t-shirts. I wore this so you guys could see. There's thermal shirts, pants. There's usually one pair of tennis shoes you can get. You can get more of the slides. 
I was at a jail that didn't even give you slides, they gave you flip-flops. So you were wearing socks with like the thong flip-flops to court, which is crazy to me. No, you do not get paid money to work when you're in jail. That is a prison thing and they still don't make but like a few cents an hour, if that. The most popular commissary when I was in jail was coffee. Everybody wanted coffee. A lot of us drank coffee all day because for us, it would make us not hungry. So we would just keep drinking coffee. It just kept you busy. I guess you weren't really thinking about where you were at the whole time. You were just doing stuff. Coffee and back in the day, stamps were a big thing, but then a lot of jails stopped selling stamps and went to postcards, but postcards were a thing too. Phone calls, you could get a phone card from commissary. Some jails you buy them from commissary. Some jails you have to put the money on the phone. Commissary food is literally gas station food. I remember one jail that I was at, they didn't even sell sodas on commissary. I didn't have a soda for months till I got out of that jail. And it's crazy because now I don't really drink them like that, but back then I was and not having it. It's the same old gas station. Dollar Tree has all the same kind of commissary. Stuff like, everybody knows the honey buns. You could get cookies, something like this. Let's say you wanted to play some cards, which a lot of people would buy a deck of cards so they could gamble to try to get more commissary. You would have to buy the deck of cards, anything you buy. And what they do, it's it was usually once a week where I was. They would put it all in a bag. You would go through it, make sure it's all there. Noodles, the they call them soup in jail. I don't know why, but the ramen noodles were huge. Ramen noodles, coffee. And then for women, for us hygiene, it was almost like we had a rule. Your first commissary order, you better order hygiene stuff. Don't order candy, coffee, and all this stuff, and then turn around and be asking people for soap and shampoo and all that. That's just what my bookie taught me. She was like, just go ahead and get your, your necessities you need because you're going to need that more than you are any kind of snacks or food or anything because you're not going to starve in jail. They still feed you whether it's good food or not. It's horrible food, but you're not going to die of starvation unless you choose not to eat it. But when you're hungry enough, you will eat it. Maybe. I don't know. I did. It took me a minute, but after, because when I went to jail, I was sick in jail for a while. And then I finally, finally started eating a little bit here and there. Trading commissary. Some jails allow you to do, well, not allow. Some jails don't pay attention to it when people are trading for stuff. But a lot of jails won't allow it because it always starts problems. The same with like gambling and all that. It always starts fights and issues in there. Some jails, whatever they feed you, like on your tray, you cannot save any of that and take it to your cell. You can't take a mayonnaise packet. You can't take any of that. What's there is there. They don't want anyone hoarding it or doing other things for it or doing other things with it or turning it into contraband or whatever. And we have to remember that jails are set up to make money. If they don't give you anything and they don't let you take anything back to your cell, you're going to try to get money. The more money you spend, the more money they make. If they strip you from all that, they're going to expect you to buy it. And that's the only way that you can have these things, which is insane to me that it's allowed. Certain things are allowed in there, but only if you have money. And most people that go to jail, even if you think you have money or you think you have a best friend, family, wh whoever, you think someone's your ride or die, when you go to jail, you really find out who's going to be there for you. And a lot of times, even if someone is there in the beginning, they don't stick around. People have lives to live. They have bills to pay. You are not their problem. You're a grown adult in jail. At the end of the day, it's no one's responsibility but your own. So you've got to find ways to get what you need while you're in there. How I would stretch my commissary out, I would, let's say I got a pack of noodles. I would say, okay, I've got seven packs of noodles. I'm going to have one pack of noodles for lunch every day. Shampoo, most jails had VO5, shampoo and conditioner. Some had Pantene Pro-V, but you're going to pay out the butt for this. But let's say I'm running out of this or what I, I still, and you guys, I'm very frugal I still do this now. I will take like shampoo. If I'm starting to run low, I'll add water to it. My soaps at home, I will add water to my soap to stretch it out. Even hand sanitizer. I have like Bath and Body Works hand sanitizer. 
I will put an unscented sanitizer in my sanitizer to stretch it out. That's what I was doing in 2020 when all, all that craziness was going on. But I do that. I still do it now to stretch things. Not a lot. You don't want to like mess up the effect and it not work anymore but you can still add water to any of the stuff but that's how i would stretch stuff anything that i could and then you just trade you gotta trade you gotta find hustles you gotta trade i've shown the different things we did with comics you can draw you can make cards you can make arts and crafts there's just so many different things you can do some people don't know how to read and write in jail a lot of people don't you can help them with that you can try to help with like filling out legal paperwork. There's just all kinds of stuff and all kinds of ways to hustle in jail. And I promise you when you get in there and you see everybody else doing it, you're going to be like, okay, I gotta, I gotta find a way because I can't not shower. Cause I promise you, you're going to want to shower like two or three times a day. And most jails, you can shower as many times a day, as long as you're not on lockdown and like you're not at work or whatever, they allow you to shower. The showers there, like even when you shower, you still don't feel clean. When you get out of jail or you're getting out of jail or you get moved to a new jail, I just made this video. You can't take your commissary with you when you go to a new jail. There's There might be like a couple of things you can take, but most of it you cannot take. They make you buy everything again. So if you don't have money, you're not getting new stuff. They don't care. Normally when you get out of jail, you'll give your commissary to someone. I always did just because I knew I could get more. I've had a lot of you ask if there's ways to send care packages. I'm sure there is, you guys. There are weekly care packages, like you can send one a week to an inmate. There are ways to donate. You just have to look in your area and see how to go about doing it. I've heard of people randomly putting money on inmates' books, sending the, the commissary packs. There's just different things. The commissary packs, there's usually like a coffee pack or sweet and salty pack. There's noodle pack. There's a hygiene pack. There's just a couple different things that you can get. You can't choose what goes in it specifically, but it's a pack of different things. Most just have the same stuff, just different prices and sometimes different brands, but the same gas station or Dollar Tree stuff that they're charging out the wazoo for. If you have money on your commissary, your books, when you're getting out of jail, they will also they will put that either on a debit card or like a check or whatever. People say you don't have to have commissary in jail, but there are some things that you really need that you don't get in there. And I will say you don't know what you've got until it's gone. If you go to jail and they strip you of everything, you do not understand how bad you need those things until you don't have them. The same when you're homeless and you just don't have, you can't afford to get these things. You really don't know what you've got until it's gone. Something as simple as deodorant or toothpaste. You really learn to appreciate those things when you have them in jail or when you get out of jail and get those things again. I know everybody says just don't go to jail. You don't have to worry about these things, but it literally can happen to anyone. I say this all the time. Sometimes it's out of your control. Sometimes you get in a random car wreck and something serious happens. Someone doesn't make it and they're going to take you to jail and ask questions later. That's just how it is. Or let the judge decide. That's just how it is. So whether you're innocent, guilty, it doesn't matter. You go to jail first. And then, like I said, they ask questions later. That's how it is with everything. You could catch an officer on a bad day. Or his speedometer was wrong. Or I don't know. It could be anything, you guys. Someone could get in an argument with you. And the officer takes you both to jail. You and your... <laughs> significant other could get in an argument and they'll take you both to jail. You and your mom could get in an argument and they'll take you both to jail and let the judge figure out what's going on. That's just how it is. Plus that's more money uh, for the jails, more money. That's their quota. We've all heard of the quota for everything. That's just how it is. That's how it's always been. I just wish that inside jail was a little bit different because there are people in there that struggle with mental health and addiction and, and that are homeless. I saw there's some states that being homeless is illegal now. They will take you to jail if you're homeless and you're out on the street, which is insane with the prices and inflation right now. People can't afford this. So how can you make it illegal? They don't care. It's more money for <laughs> more money for the jails and prisons. That's why I tell people, educate yourself. See who owns these jails and prisons. There are rappers. There are musicians that have come out and been like, yes, the record label 
has me talking about this stuff. I'm forced to talk about these things. I can't even talk about what I want to talk about anymore. They don't want you to talk about real stuff. They want you to talk about the stuff to brainwash people, society, the youth into thinking this, this is cool and this is cool. Think about how much lyrics have changed over the years. It's insane. And how the younger and younger generations are getting more into things they shouldn't be even, they shouldn't even know about yet. There is a reason why all this stuff is the way it is. And I'm not being a conspiracy theorist. This stuff is legit. There are plenty of ways to find these things out. Do your research. Because no matter what I say, you got to do your own research so you can come up with your own thoughts and beliefs. But this stuff is real. And it's insane. The things that certain people are getting away with, the things that are being done even in jail, the laws that are being broken, the rights that are being broken. It's just insane, you guys. It's insane to punish someone for a disease or mental health, just something that's going on in our brain that we can't control. We can treat things, but we can't control them, per se. So yeah, there's just so much more into that world that most of society has no clue. We are slowly starting to see the younger generation is starting to fight back on all these things. They don't want to do these things. And it's good to see that the millennials and older are starting to wake up and and see this. Like, hey, what the heck have we been doing this whole time? Why have we been listening to this? Or why have we never questioned these things? It's good to see that people are starting to wake up because we we need to. We've all just been like robots and like doing what we've been told. Like as kids so but yeah I hope this helped you guys with the whole commissary if y'all have any questions let me know I'm gonna try to make some more commissary videos I'm gonna make a video I think my mom maybe my sister will do a video with me we're gonna do like different coffee drinks the lattes and cappuccinos and coffees and there's a drink called mud it's just there's so many different drinks you guys I just wanted to do that you know bring out my old uh bartending skills but we're gonna make coffee drinks i just think it'll be fun and i want to see my family's reaction to see if this is something that they would continue to drink or not or because there's a lot of stuff you will eat and drink in jail that you would definitely not touch when you're out of jail one thing that i ate so much of in jail that i will not eat at all is oranges i don't even no, lemon, lime, orange. I won't even mess with that stuff now because I ate so many oranges in jail. I just can't, you guys. And it just triggers that in my brain. I can't. I just can't. Ugh, I can't. Let me know if there's something that you guys ate in jail that you absolutely cannot touch now or drank or whatever. But yeah, I hope this helps, guys. Let me know. And yeah, thanks for hanging out with me today. See you guys.